Hey, what's going on guys? This is Boy C. Will back to you with another video. Man, I'm super excited today. Why? Because we are going over the Gigabyte or 2080 Ti Extreme. Yes, what a beast of a card. Man, I hope you had a chance to check out my install and unboxing video of the 2080 Ti card. If you haven't done that already, definitely hit the link somewhere up you know one of the cars up around here um but man before we get into this video um uh, this is your first time here welcome here we do everything tech all things tech whatever it is we like to do it and uh man if you're a returning viewer we appreciate you the most because you keep everything going so without further ado let's get into this video all right guys so let's go over some of the specs of the car here so we have the Gigabyte Oris um, RTX 2080 Ti Extreme. Um, it definitely comes with 11 gigabytes worth of GDDR6 memory, 352, um, it's 352 bits worth of memory bandwidth. Um, you have the Windforce stack. Um, it's 300 millimeter fans. Uh, that's cooling the actual card itself. And as you can see, the actual lights and stuff like that are going. Uh, beautiful card. I have this on the cable mod um vertical gpu mount and i get into that a little bit later on in the video um and also with these fans this is something that's a little funny i get into that later on in the video as well um this car has seven video outputs so it has three on um, display port outputs uh three hdmi outputs and then it has one on uh, usb c um, output and what's phenomenal about that is that a lot of the other cards may like i know the asus strix card only comes with two display port um, outputs and then it's like two HDMI port outputs um, and then the USB-C um, but I have three high refresh rate monitors so I needed the three display port outputs um, this also comes with a metal back plate you probably see that in my install uh, boxing video and of course it's built for overclocking um, and then it comes with the four-year warranty um, and online registration is required for that and that's uh, significant because a lot of manufacturers don't come with the four-year warranty it's usually three um, and so one of the reasons why I chose this card is one for the RGB lights as you can see here but also I I chose this car for the core clock so the core clock on this card is 1770 megahertz and uh, that's the actual boost clock uh, the reference card um, is 1545 megahertz um, and man uh, this is one of the fastest cars on the market right now uh, so going in diving a little bit deeper into the actual specs um, and I'm not gonna go over everything here um, but it does come with 4352 CUDA cores um, and that's significant with gaming video editing a month all type of other things um that definitely you know is one of the best cars that you could be able to get on the market right now yeah the memory clock is at 14,140 megahertz um 11 gigabytes with the memory size uh gddr6 352 bits with the memory bus uh, memory bandwidth 616 gigabytes uh, PCIe 3.0 card size now this is significant because depending on your case you know you definitely have to make sure that you measure it um, this card is actually in length it's 290 millimeters so um, it's definitely a long card uh, but the size the case that I have here is the Corsair uh, 500D uh, SE RGB um, and man love that case um, has a lot going on with it and now here's something significant the recommended power supply for the card is 750 watts uh, so definitely keep that in mind I currently have a EVGA 850 watt supernova G3 power supply so we got more than enough and as far as the actual power connectors um, it takes two 8 pin uh, connectors which is standard for the actual 2080 Ti uh let's see and we already talked about the outputs uh three display port three hdmi one USB C. um it does come with nvidia nv link uh for sli but that's kind of like a dying breed right now <laughs> so accessories i kind of went over that stuff in the installation unboxing video um so that's that now i also want to show you the actual cable mod uh because as, as you can see the actual card um i did um go ahead and install the actual vertical mount um i went ahead and installed the actual vertical mount uh, so we could definitely have a chance have an opportunity to always take a look at these rgb lights that's on the card and man it's just beautiful man um but this is the cable mod vertical uh mount now this particular case that i have does come with uh, the actual vertical uh mounts and the spots for it you know, already built into the case but it puts the actual card 
One, it puts it too close up to the glass so it chokes off the actual airflow. And then two, the only cars that's compatible um, is cars that are two PCI slots or lower. And so this particular car, even though um, it's thick, <laughs> it is a thick car. So that's another reason why I bought the actual cable mod vertical uh, PCI bracket. Uh, so one, I like how it pushes the car back into the case, further back into the case about uh, maybe two to three inches, two and a half inches back into the case. So um, I get a lot of airflow, puts it directly in front of the actual fans, uh, my intake fans that's bringing in all of the cold air. Um, so I am liking that. Also another thing, this one comes with uh, this particular, they have different kits on Amazon. This particular kit comes with uh, two display port cables. Um, and so I actually need to get a third one because I have three monitors um, and I have two MSI, uh, Mag 24C monitors, they're 1080p, 144 hertz, uh, which I'm going to be doing a video on that um, at a later date. And then I have my baby, <laughs> the ASUS PG279Q. Um, it goes up to 165 hertz, 1440p monitor, IPS panel, beast of a monitor. Um, this is one of the best monitors I ever had and also saw without going 4K, you know, at those ridiculous prices. So if you want to take a look at any of my tech gear or purchase anything, definitely hit the links in the bottom of the description below. Um, they are Amazon affiliate links. There's no extra cost to you, but it does help out the channel if you buy something. So feel free to go ahead and do that. All right. So to get into some of the nitty gritty about this card, again, one of the reasons is that I bought this card is one, the performance, two, the RGB lights, yep. And then three, performance. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the software. All right, so we got the Oris engine and then we have the RGB Fusion 2.0. So with these two particular programs, one, the Oris engine is designed to control pretty much all of the performance options on the car. So the GPU boost, uh, the memory clock, uh, GPU voltage, the fan speed, the power target, and the target temperature. Um, and so we're gonna dive into that in a second. And then with the RGB Fusion, this allows us to be able to change the actual, uh, the lights, the RGB lights and stuff on the motherboard, um, but also on the card itself. And I'm gonna go through each one of these. So let's start with the lights first. Uh, right now it's on tri-color. Um, and of course, this is what it looks like on camera. Um, really, I know the, the actual fans look a little bit choppy when it comes to the, uh, to the actual lights and that's just because of the shutter speed that i'm actually recording it um, but it's a lot smoother than that um, but that is tricolor rainbow loop that's what this looks like and so it starts to go through its own thing and i love um, the way that they have this set up and you can actually change the colors and you can do all type of things but that is the rainbow loop you have the gradient and I love how this, and you could change the colors on all the stuff that I'm sure you could actually change the colors. Right now it's going from white to red. Um, and that's pretty dope. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and change this to blue, which is one of my favorite colors. Um, and you see how that changes. Uh, we have the wave and that goes into the, you know, kind of like the rainbow colors and stuff like that. And that's pretty dope. Um, intelligence, um, I kind of like this. I don't use it, but I do like it. Um, if we hit apply here, um, basically what this does is it actually shows, okay, hey, if we're at 40 degrees, it's going to be green, 41 and 70, it's going to be yellow. And if we're above 71, um, it's going to be orange. And if I put this on static, of course, I can change this to whatever color I want this to be. So if I want that to be green, boom, uh, that's like an aqua green. If I want it to be blue, boom, it turns blue. If I want to be pink, turns pink, purple, white. Whatever it is, we like to do it. <laughs> All right, uh, we have the pulse. And uh, with this, the actual lights, um, they, they fade in and come out. Uh, we have the flash. Don't particularly like the flash too much. Um, you know, it just goes off and on like somebody's cutting on and off a light switch. You have a double flash, hence they flash twice. Um, you have the color cycle which I really don't know what the difference is between the color cycle and the, the wave. Well, it's almost the same. <laughs> and then you have the claws. The claws are pretty dope. Um, you have kind of like a little breakup in 
um, the actual fans and then the actual LED and stuff like that. And then you have the color shift and the colors actually gradually change from left to right with the fans. Um, that's pretty dope. And then you have the dazzling. And uh, this is what I call the actual uh, <laughs> uh, the dance machine because the colors are changing. Uh, it's like two colors on one on each of the fans. And man, it's, it's just pretty dope. So that's how you actually change the colors of the cards. You could customize this. Um, it also changes the actual Oris logo on the back. And on top, it says Oris. So all that stuff changes. Uh, but definitely, if you get this card, get the vertical gpu mounted otherwise you're not going to be able to take advantage of seeing the colors and all that good stuff all right so on to the oris engine now with this i'm going to go ahead and just minimize this so with the oris engine uh man this is where you control everything so gpu boost is so if we want to do overclocking which i will be doing in a separate video not in this particular video um because that's just that's a safer video that just needs some attention by itself but if you want an overclock you could definitely uh slide this over and you could change the actual boost um or what the actual card goes up to um the highest i've actually gotten it up to was like 140 plus megahertz um so you could definitely play around with that and really with the 28 of ti you really don't need to overclock it especially um this is already overclocked out of the factory you know the boost clocks on the car right now is at 1770 so i mean you know what, what else do you need to do uh, memory clock uh, man, you could pull this up above that. Um, normally, when I'm overclocking, I normally add on like a thousand. Um, it always depends on the actual card, but I normally do a thousand. GPU voltage, I haven't touched this, um, but you can actually mess around with the slider for the voltage. Fan speed, I leave this on auto. Unless I'm doing something different, you can actually customize this. You could change it to manual. Uh, you could change it to customize, and it, you could set up your own fan curve, stuff like that. I normally leave that on auto. Power target. Now, normally this is set at 100. I have this all the way up because with the power target, that allows you that allows your car to boost up to its highest speed. Um, you know, until you start to get to the actual thermal throttling uh, when it comes to the actual temperature. And then for the target temp, it's set at 84 out of the box. Didn't touch that. Um, and so, and you have situations where the car does get that hot, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on in the actual. Uh, some of the gameplay uh, that we'll be doing. Uh, so make sure that you stay tuned and watch the video all the way through because I will be showing a couple of different games um, right after we go through the actual benchmarks. And so without further ado, let's get into the benchmarks. So the first benchmark that we are going to do is Far Cry 5. And let's just take a look at some of my settings that we have here. I'm gonna go to options and we're gonna go to video. And just so you can see, we are at 2560 by 1440. Uh, full screen. Everything is on ultra. Everything is on high. And let's go back out here. And we're just going to go ahead and hit the benchmark. And you'll take a look at the actual um, my MSI afterburner overlay uh, up here at the top left hand corner. You'll take a look at the actual GPU. Um, percentages the boost clock the temperature i currently have the glass off right now um, but i am going to put that back on when we do gameplay but for the benchmark i'm recording the actual car right now which is why i have the glass off um, so as far as temps uh, just take a look at the actual temps during the actual gameplay but for the benchmarks i want you to look at the actual frames per second that we get here and also uh, what the boost clock goes up to with the power target being at 122 percent all right, let's go.
All right, guys, so man, you saw the benchmarks. We looked at Far Cry 5. Uh, we definitely looked at Assassin's Creed Odyssey and we looked at Division 2. And as you can see, beast of a card. I'm talking about 1440p ultra settings, ripping through those in game benchmarks. And uh, man, you know, on average, what we're talking about as far as uh, Far Cry 5 and Division 2, um, 100 plus you know frames per second definitely on far cry 5 103 i think was the average um and then we got on division 2 around about 110 almost and then on assassin's creed odyssey um man you talking about just blazing blazing through the actual benchmarks um so one of the things i want to take a look at now is uh definitely doing some gameplay um so we are going to look at control gameplay gears 5 um, and then we will also take a look at, uh, let's see, Youngbloods, Wolfenstein. So these are some of the newer titles that just came out. Um, I actually picked up Youngbloods and Control uh, for free with the purchase of the 2080 Ti. Then Gears 5 just came out. These are definitely some GPU intensive games, except for, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, uh, but you'll definitely be able to see some high, you know, fast paced uh, gameplay. So let's take a look at these three titles um, and definitely, man, uh, stay tuned to the end. And you'll definitely see one of the <laughs> biggest things that I definitely need to talk to you about with this card. Uh, just watch it to the end. So let's take a look at some gameplay. burrows in like an infuriating melody that makes you hum it over and over. Hitler, you were born to do this. Your target? Bring him on, sis! Ah! 
So, <laughs> um, you've seen what the gameplay looked like. Um, you've seen all that good stuff. So now we are sitting at the Division Two in-game benchmark screen. It's been sitting here for a while. Um, one of the biggest things about this particular card um, is the thermals. Um, as you can see up at the top left-hand corner, uh, we are at 78 degrees, 79 degrees. Um, and I turned the air off um, in my room um, just so you can kind of see it. as long as you have your air on and it's at a good temperature, uh, the card is pretty much fine. You'll, you know, pretty much be bouncing around between maybe 74, 75 degrees. Uh, once you turn the air off, the temperature starts to go up. Um, the highest my temperature went up to was maybe around 83, 84 degrees, which is what the actual target is set before it starts to throttle. Um, but this card definitely runs a little bit hotter than some of the other three fan cards like the MSI Gaming Trio or the Asus um, Strix 2080 Ti version. So uh, keep that in mind. So you definitely need a case with good airflow uh, my case has great airflow um, i have a 140 millimeter exhaust on the back i mean i have a 120 millimeter exhaust on the back three uh, 120 millimeters on the front for intake um, and then i have the corsair h115 i has two uh, 140 millimeter ml fans uh, for exhaust uh, for the aio um, and yeah, <laughs> the car gets warm. So if that is a concern to you, uh, definitely you have other options in terms of cars with the same specs and stuff like that. I would definitely recommend the MSI Gaming Trio X or Game X Trio. Uh, but if you want a one of a kind RGB lights, uh, performance, um, then definitely go with this card as long as you are able to cool it. Uh, pretty good so uh, let me know down in the comments what you think uh, what you think about the performance what you think about the gameplay if you plan on picking one of these up um, I actually picked this card up from Micro Center um, I got it open box uh, for about 1100 bucks and so I got about $200 off the card retails for $12.99 so yeah um, I got a pretty good deal on this card uh, usually when I get tech stuff I sell it, flip it, uh, buy something better, buy something else, trade stuff in, stuff like that. So um, this card is not cheap by any means, um, but it's one of the best cards on the market. One of the best cards that you could be able to get, and it's one of the best looking cards by far um, that I've seen. Uh, so let me know what you think. Definitely don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. If you'd like to see more of this content, definitely subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Share this on social media. That definitely helps. Um, hey, just hit me down in the comments of what you think. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video.